All right, my name is Jeannie Chan. This is my senior phase tech talk, and I'm talking about game physics engines. So let's get started. Physics engines are programs that simulate Newtonian physics in a mathematically and computationally simulated visual virtual environment. They typically have at least two core components, a collision detection and collision response system, and the dynamic simulation component, responsible for solving the forces affected affecting the simulated objects. Its primary purpose in games is to make effects appear more realistic to the observer. And the figure on the left shows a physics engine in the context of a game app. So a note that physics engines can be used in 2D and 3D games. And when using a physics engine, a usual workflow involves setting up a bunch of objects, adding them to this magic box that we call the physics engine, and then asking the physics engine, where are the objects? Are they rotating? Are they moving? And uh, if they are, then draw them out, render them for us in an animation. Um, in this magic box is a world, and all these are kind of names of modules and components that you can definitely pull from, from physics engines and libraries. So you have the world, and the world you render a body. Bodies are essential elements able to move around the screen. They have a location and size, but are nothingness, no more than a point with a vector and no form. You give this body a shape, and shapes actually have geometry. So to connect um, the body, to a shape, you need a fixture. And, wh and when you want to connect bodies to each other, um, you use joints to create a more complex articulated system. So for most physics engines, some basic physics understanding is helpful. There's also quirks where you need to convert from pixel coordinates to world coordinates and meters then back into pixels again. And you have to remember that width and length of shapes are in terms of distance from the center of the body. So a lot of your heights and width will be divided by two. So there are many types of game physics that can be gen generally classified as rigid body or soft body simulators. Um, rigid bodies have shape and orientation. They can rotate, collide with each other. Bounds of the shapes are not changing. And a notable rigid body simulation is ragdoll physics, which simulate the behavior of a complex articulated system, um, as seen in the comically difficult game QOP, which is named after the actual keys you use on your keyboard to control the thighs and the calves of this ragdoll here. <laughs> a series of connected rigid bodies are connected by hinges at the joints, and our programs have Newtonian physics act upon them. See how he inches towards the 100 meter mark. <laughs> OK, so we have another demo we can show, um, another physics engine called P2. And ooh, render's really big here. So basically, um, ragdoll, and he's dead. Uh, <laughs> you can play with the settings in most of these uh, physics engines. It's pretty cool. So I can reverse gravity, and he's gone. So. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> Next slide. So, well, notably, um, you can imagine ragdoll physics is often used when a character dies, so it gives more realistic movement. Um, OK, let's go back. Um, physics-based character animation in the past only used rigid body dynamics due to speeds and ease of calculation. But modern games and movies are increasingly using soft body physics for its realism. So we can go to see another demo. And you know, as you can see soft body physics give kind of this bouncy, jiggly um, effect to whatever the objects you can, um, here. Uh, you can kind of deform them, and yeah, you can get you get the point. At this point. Um, so there's different types of soft body um, physics simulations. Particles are the simplest. Um, um, entities to model since they're just point masses, they don't have shape or size or orientation, meaning they don't need to rotate. So that takes a lot, a lot of complexity. Um, you can render cloth. So PhysicsJS is a great library, which um, I personally like because you can see code. And basically, it's rendering an array with um, rows and columns of constraints that have this kind of stretchy quality to it, and then you can also interact with them um, with clicks and stuff. So if I hide the code, so I can make it waft in the wind. And I could also like create tears and stuff. So you can imagine this would be very useful for creating a very realistic kind of simulation. Um, another notable example um, that is pretty familiar um, if you've played Angry Birds is the slingshot. So the only soft body component here is the spring that will be hitting, ooh, missed it, <laughs> the um, rigid bodies here in this simulation. Okay. 
And um, with physics engines, there is this trade-off between speed and accuracy. There are generally two classes of physics engines, real-time and high-precision types. High-precision physics engines usually are usually used in scientific um, applications, like um, simulating nanoparticles or anything as big as celestial bodies, and computer animated films. So they calculate very precise physics for increased accuracy and require more processing power. Real-time physics engines, on the other hand, are used in video games and interactive computing. Um, they use simplified calculations in degrees and a decreased accuracy to compute in time for games to respond at the appropriate rate of gameplay. Um, you wouldn't want to use a high precision engine because of this emphasis on speed with limited CPU power. So, um, scientific th physics engines can rely on supercomputers for their processing power, but are too slow for use in everyday applications. Whereas game physics engines run on a resource constrained type of environment, such as handle gaming devices or mobile phones. In most computer games, processor speed and gameplay are again more important than the accuracy of the simulation. This leads to designs for physics engines that produce real results in real time, but the simulation is geared towards providing a perceptually correct approximation rather than an accurate one. Um, so I will show this particular game called The Last Guardian on the PS4. It just came out in 2016. And there's a lot going on in this scene that I can break <coughs> down later. However, more modern game engines use physics in scenarios that require more accuracy, combining rel uh, reliable rigid body dynamics with soft body dynamics. Games reach new heights in perceptually real motion, while at the same time requiring more processing power. Oh, yes, he caught him. Awesome. So you can see there's a lot of rigid bodies as the ruins are breaking apart. There was some momentum in the tail as it caught the protagonist. And you know the guardian here is clinging to your life. Save both of them. Okay. All right. So let's break the scene down. Um, notable physics uh, featured in the scene of the last guardian include bullet time, um, constraints and chains, ragdoll, cloth, and collision detection. So if you want to go into bullet time, this one is more of a time piece, so I want to, oh, let's update it and hide the code. Basically, it slows down the scene upon impact, and after a certain amount of time on a set timeout, it will um, return to real time. And you could also uh, mess with this code a bit uh, if you want for a ridiculous scene, so. <laughs> Yeah, highly suggest playing around with this. Um, constraints and chains. Um, so another demo we have here. This is basically what happened when the character was catching on the tail. The tail is swinging toward him. He landed on it. Um, basically, a bunch of rigid bodies uh, attached with a bunch of elastic-like constraints. Um, these are definitely more sensitive than the actual tail used in the clip. But as you can see, it gives it more swimming, swinging, flexible motion. And then, um, as said before, there's Ragdoll, as the character was kind of clinging to your life on the, on the um, beast's tail. Um, Cloth was kind of flapping in the wind as he was being flown around. And then we'll talk about collision detection. Um, so the most widespread use, the most complicated aspect of physics engines is the collision detection and response system. So more simply put, it determines empty space from filled space. And without this, an avatar would phase through anything in its path or fall through the ground forever. Um, it's a, uh, collision detection is generally a very expensive operation. And basically, the most simplest um, kind of example of it would be checking if two circles collide. And you would just check the distance between the centers and see if it's less than the sum of the radii. You can kind of see that it would become more complicated um, if you had rectangles. And then the or or more complicated polygons, and then they start rotating. So you have to kind of think about all the different possibilities that they would collide, and it gets extremely complicated when you go into 3D. Um, fortunately, I don't have time to talk about more complex alg algorithms that can cover and optimize these things. So I'd highly suggest looking into these in the future. That each of these kind of deserve their own 10-minute talk, and that's it. I that's all I got for. Um, game physics engines. Thank you very much and hope you learned something from this. <laughs>